Panamint Valley, some of the most rugged and dangerous terrain in the western United States. To the north and to the east is the infamous Death Valley, where, if you're ill-prepared while traveling through, death could be a real outcome. So welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm headed out to the Mojave Desert, ultimately gonna end up on the edge of Death Valley National Park. Uh, tonight, my brother-in-law and I, uh, who you've seen on the channel before uh, with his Bronco, uh, we're gonna camp tonight out east of, kind of like the Ballarat uh, area. We haven't dialed in the exact spot just yet. But then tomorrow, uh, we're gonna meet up also kind of on the edge of Death Valley National Park with Ed Shin and his Patreon meetup uh, and their group. So I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing Ed again. Uh, he's got Mike, Flyfisher530 with him, and then all of uh, the Patreon crew uh, that's rolling with him as well. So it uh, should be a great time. Uh, really looking forward to uh, this trip, the first desert trip of the year. Uh, desert camping is uh, just so awesome. So as I usually say, uh, thanks for coming along for the ride. The drive from Central California to Panamint Valley is so awesome, but this time it's a special treat. The whole desert was lush and green, wildflowers blooming everywhere. I'm making my way to a small ghost town in the middle of the valley called Ballarat. Time to get aired down and hit the dirt. If I'm going to be honest, there's not a ton to see here in Ballarat, but you've got to stop in and make a quick donation to help keep it preserved. And then you can be on your way. They have some cool old relics and artifacts of the surrounding mine towns. You've got to come by here at least once. I'm heading up the north side of the Pleasant Valley Road Loop. I've never been up this trail, so I'm not entirely sure what to expect. I know there are mines, a nicely preserved cabin, and so much more. The weather is just perfect. This trip is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see what the trail has in store for us. One thing about this trail, you need to be okay with some moderate pinstriping. It's a little overgrown with all of the recent rains. All right, so just spent a few minutes there in Ballarat and then made my way up the Pleasant Canyon Loop Trail. I'm about three quarters of the way up, stopped at this uh, really cool mining site. This might be a location for uh, us to camp tonight. I say us, that's me and my uh, brother-in-law. 
he was about five hours behind me uh, in leaving, so he's not here yet. Uh, the issue right now is I was gonna send him my coordinates and I got a new iPhone and my Garmin inReach app was not fully downloaded. So sending him a message has become increasingly difficult. I did uh, get a text message off to my wife to give him the location, but uh, I'm not getting any response back. So I'm not sure if that's going through. I think it's going through. I'm probably gonna head back down the trail uh, into Ballarat and maybe wait for him there. And then we'll both uh, come up the trail uh, together. So that's the plan for now. Uh, like I said, this is a great spot, really cool, but uh, it could all be ruined if we can't find each other. So hopefully we can figure that out here soon. other side of the road so very relieved that I found Fred uh, we just happened to see each other uh, on the highway here and uh, we're gonna run back to the town of Trona try to tap into someone's Wi-Fi because I need to download an app uh, for my drone with my new phone uh, I forgot to download it so uh, always think ahead I really messed up there um, so we're gonna run back into Trona and uh, see if we can uh, figure that out a huge thanks to the kind folks at the TIS General Store. They let me connect to their Wi-Fi so I could get my apps downloaded. They were a total lifesaver. We're heading back out through Ballarat, up the Pleasant Canyon Road Trail. The sun is setting. And now we have a serious decision to make. All right, so we got options, which are um, maybe go to a spot that has a nice view. I have not been there yet. We can check it out, or we can go straight to the mine. I've been to the mine. It's pretty pretty legit. So what are you what are you feeling? Top right there. I see furrows. They're straight to my my right. There's three of them. All right, so uh, now that we've seen our first uh, burrows out here in the wild, back to the original question. Uh, campsite with a vista or to the mine? What are you feeling? I vote for the vista. Check it out. Uh, I'm going to have so much traffic up there. And like that, head to the mine. 10-4, let's do it. Being near Death Valley always makes me think of Psalm 23, 4. You'll know this one. It says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Pulling into camp here, this is a nice level spot. I really think this could be one of the best spots in all of Panamint Valley. If you'd like the coordinates, please reach out to me in the comments below. I'll be glad to hook you up. Now it's time to get set up with the Trail Newbie World Famous Front Runner Boxes on Legs. Once you have them, you'll never go back. It's an easy DIY. We uh, made it to camp, and uh, I think we picked the right spot with the vista, looking down over uh, Panamint Valley there. Um, just a really great spot. Tomorrow we'll go up and check out the mine and maybe go up even further. There's a uh, cabin, and I think we might get a chance to see 
the other side of the um, range there, which actually looks down into kind of what everybody considers Death Valley proper um, in terms of the national park and all the touristy stuff. So um, we'll go check that out tomorrow. But for now, we're going to cook up some food, uh, get the propane fire going. Uh, temperature's perfect. And um, we'll, uh, we'll catch you here in a bit. All right, not sure if you can see it, but this donkey, he's been watching us for about a half hour. He's not happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, look at that giant bat. What? Where? I don't see it. It just landed on the, on the white rock over there. What? You think it was a bird? Oh, This guy. Look how tame he is. He's literally 10 feet away. Waking up here, it's an absolutely perfect morning. We only have one thing to do today, and that's Explore. If you thought Death Valley was the only place with views and trails, think again. Don't overlook Panamint Valley. There's so much to explore here, and not to mention you're on public land, not dealing with those recent national park regulations. shots like this make you want to get out on the trail. Don't wait. You don't need a built-up rig to find places like this. Heading up Pleasant Canyon, the next stop is Claire Camp. After I got back from this trip, I read some interesting stories of ghosts, untimely deaths, and mysterious figures roaming the premises. So, needless to say, I'm glad we didn't camp here last night. So much more of this site can be seen from the air. Let me throw the drone up so we can check this out.
What's amazing about these old mining locations are, they're not that old. W.D. Clare purchased the nearby Ratcliffe Mine in 1930. That's right, only 97 years ago, this spot was buzzing with miners and pop-up towns that went boom and then bust. Ratcliffe Mine produced nearly half a million dollars in gold prior to 1930 and was known as one of the major mining locations in the Panamint Valley area. Our next stop on this trail is the World Beater Cabin, named after the nearby World Beater Mine. This cabin is absolutely the best one we've ever found. You can tell from the outside that there are some awesome folks who keep this cabin in great condition. Just look at this deck. It's in incredible shape. The cabin has electricity, powered by solar, a stove, a sink, the list goes on. This cabin is clean and one that I could actually sleep in. If you're looking for a spot for several rigs with a makeshift rifle range and so much more, then World Beater Cabin is a place you've got to check out. One thing we couldn't resist is what seems to be a newly built outhouse. And by we, I mean, Fred couldn't resist it. <laughs> As we left the cabin, we really wanted to find a great mine to explore. Just off the trail, we saw this and went in to check it out. Dead end. Oh well. While this was more of a cave, we were still determined to find an actual mine we could go deep into. We just have to keep looking. We're heading back down into the valley, going to pass again through Ballarat. This time, something really unique happened. No, it's not seeing another burrow. Check this out. As we stopped through, a group of single engine planes did a flyover. There wasn't just one or two, there turned out to be around 15. Talk about a fast way to travel through Panamint Valley. This reminded me and Fred, however, that we needed to make up some ground ourselves. Time to go bombing through the desert. near the north end of the valley, and we think we might have some intel for a really good mine location on the west side of the valley.
there's definitely some evidence of structures and old equipment. It looks like this mine is all closed off though. Or is it? Find some old Levi's. Oh, check this out. Oh my gosh. You don't want to go down there. There's no water. It's a bottomless pit. Dude. Uh, that's sketchy. I think it ends here. Watch out, there's nails coming out of these boards. Oh my gosh, this keeps going. What if we get lost? Filming too. I'm good on my power. Ooh. There's a little bottle. It has a barcode. Not old. You do remember how to get out, right? Uh, left, left, right, left. Up, down, right. up, down, left, right, left, right. So like, oh, oh. start, B, A. Yeah, what is it? Yeah, I bonkied just a little bit. There. That's a that's a certain. It's not possible. Yeah. The dead. This is must be a real dangerous one because they at least took the time to block, block it off. I don't think that ends. What about across there? That's that's a that's a sure path going? You go first. I'm going, <laughs> oh, I'm going right after you. Me in. Do you have good life insurance? I'm afraid that we're being watched. This is probably the coolest mine I've ever been in. Yeah. So I'd like to thank you for forcing me to go in.
500 feet in. There's a light behind us. What is it? moving. It's coming toward us. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, the good news is we can see the light out. Yeah. 800 feet in. It's cooler over here. Eight sixty. Watch your head. Eight eighty. Yeah. Nine twenty. Watch your head on that wire thing there. Now this is a cool mine. Nine eighty. It splits here. Oh my gosh. It splits all kinds of ways. I think that's ending right there. There's a door. That's where they kept the dynamite. Maybe. Come here, see how far I bet you that's what these sacks are. Yeah. Make sure your dynamite sucks. What if this door closes on us? Man. It's pretty low. Yeah. I don't think it really goes anywhere. Maybe it's where they keep the... Where Gollum lives. Are you kidding me right now? Stop. How do they do that? Okay. That is insane. It literally just. I can't see the top. That's how we get stuck up the bottom. Watch your head. Pretty sure this ends right here. Oh, it doesn't end. Oh my gosh. And I have a good sense of direction. I know where we are. <sighs> yeah, it gets too tight. This is this is recent. There's like fractures in the rock and stuff. See that right there? And this right here. I don't want this to come down on us. Let's get out of this part. That's that doesn't seem stable. <sighs> Thousand twenty feet. Just watch your dome, bro. Yeah, you might not be a lot of oxygen back here. Thousand eighty. Thousand eighty two in. That's our limit. That's our limit. That's the furthest we've been inside a mountain. You can see the light all the way down there. It's amazing that they cut this tunnel that straight that you can see the light all the way back. 
Oh, here's the pit. Not a spare. Oh, how far down does that go? Oh, man. I think it just ends right there. We didn't go down there on purpose. That's where Gollum lives. Man, I want to know what the name of this mine is. It's called Modoc. <coughs> Modoc. M O D O C. Yeah, Modoc. There's a Modoc County up north. You still feeling lightheaded? Gopher just came out of a burrow. <laughs> it was getting late in the day, and we needed to track down Ed Shin's Patreon group. We didn't really have a meetup time or anything, as they've been in Alabama hills and on a trail for most of the day. So we started driving to the general area where we knew they would be. Kind of just hoped we'd get lucky. And get lucky we did. It was so awesome to see my good buddy Mike and the group that came out from all over the West Coast for Ed's meetup. That was it, man. Literally just got there right now. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. You as well. Look at Dusty coming up. Boxcar cabin. Oh, this one's crazy, huh? What do you think? I like that one we, we were at. How clean it is? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so uh, Fred and I made it and uh, met up with uh, Ed Shin's Patreon group. We are at the uh, boxcar cabin, and uh, this is a spot where we could camp, but Mike's got a spot that he's going to be taking us to that he says uh, just has so much uh, more interest and uh, mines and different things uh, to check out. So uh, this is going to be a fun night hanging out with everybody here. Uh, you can already tell this is just a great group of uh, you know, like-minded people out to have a great time and uh, really looking forward to it. Mike, how's the trip been, man? Great, man, we had a great day. It was just uh, really, really fun. Just such a great group of people. We yeah. Just an awesome day. Um, no, no problems during the day, no flat tires, no broken parts. So, uh, no, we had a great, it was a lot of fun. We saw some great stuff. So. Right on. Thank you, everybody, we love it. I'm I in. Think this spot's bigger this, than the. This is perfect. To fit out all the rigs. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. This group has got everything from trailers to ground tents. Here's a gazelle tent and a shift pod being set up. And, of course, rooftop tents.
We hung around the campfire and enjoyed some incredible Korean-style ribs made over the fire by Next Level Neville. It's amazing who you meet out here on the trail. Waking up here at camp, Mike is getting a quick interview with Ed, and if you haven't checked out Flyfisher 530's channel and obviously Ed Shins, you've got to go do it. Great channels and just good people. Packing up camp here, everyone started to roll out. Here is Victor from Trail Boss Mafia in his diesel ZR2 Colorado. Make sure to check out his channel as well. Airing up with my newly installed Kraken system from Epic Adventure Outfitters. I just did a video on that install if you want to go and check it out. Doing a trip like this with my brother-in-law is so special. He's an incredible guy and one of my closest friends. We'll have these memories to hang on to forever. All right, so uh, we got going from camp, and uh, what a great time hanging out with Ed Shin's Patreon group, meeting uh, just some awesome people, uh, that's for sure. We had a great time around the campfire. Um, large part of that group had to head north to Oregon and Washington, so they're doing it in one day. That's 15 hours, plus gas, plus food. So they've got a long day ahead of them. Uh, me and Fred have about five hours back to the Central Valley of California, but uh, before we head back, we're going to hit a waterfall. And, uh, you know, Death Valley and the waterfall doesn't really seem to make sense. Um, but Mike, Flyfisher530, he's leading us there. Uh, he said uh, just a little bit of a hike, but really should be worth it. Everybody says it's just such a, uh, a great stop along the way. So uh, we're going to go check it out. No injury. All right. That would have made for some great content though, Mike. That's it for this one, guys. I'd love to have a comment from you if you've made it this far in the video. And if you have more time to kill, check out this video. Or maybe this one. And be sure to subscribe. Like I always say, thanks for coming along for the ride.